they they are saying they they oh, they, they, away they from a, where? yes the from where? the western the western control the is the international system the united nations united nations the world bank the imf all these uh, global international you know development institutions are tilted towards the uh, west or they believe that it is skewed against uh, developing nations so these countries you know had to look to themselves and say come why why do we why do we keep uh, following these guys around why do we keep uh, depending on these people as if we can't do it ourselves and they had to look inwards and compare their similarities their strengths and decide that, decided that if they can if they can come together that synergy will bring them to where they expect and over 10 years down the line we can see that everybody now wants to be a part of the BRICS uh, union and it's while it is good for developing countries it is not uh, necessarily a welcome uh, development for uh, the western powers okay so the countries that are involved in this BRICS are developing countries no no no, no. We, they are no longer developing they have transited in fact we call those kind of economies economies is this, in, in is transition the, is the transition because of the coming together because no, of the BRICS no they are transiting because if you look at uh, if you look at parameters that we used to assess developing countries you cannot call China a developing country anymore China is is an emerging or even it has even emerged as a global superpower. The same thing with India. The same thing with uh, uh, Brazil, especially in the South American uh, bloc. So you see that the way these countries have uh, conducted themselves over time has made them very, very impossible to ignore anymore in the global economic uh, scheme of things. Okay, now we'll call them Imagine Economy. Yes. Imagine Economy. Okay, their name, this name, BRICS, is an um, acronym of the countries that are involved. More mm -hmm. countries are coming in, so the name is going to change automatically. Maybe they can decide to, because BRICS still uh, uh, sounds very catchy. Oh, to the co. Yeah, it could, BRICS and co. The same way we have uh, OPEC Plus. Instead uh, of uh, adding anything, just... Is there not going to be any kind of uh, complex for the people that their names did not come in in the <laughs> block name? Uh, you are not part of the foundation members now. So eh. you, you, you just have to take any seat you are offered for now and you build yourself within. You don't just come in and you want to take the, the okay, executive but they, position. Uh, South Africa came in and they added them. So if Nigeria come in, they're uh, not South add. Africa came in towards that beginning stage as well. So you can still refer to them as foundation members. Okay, uh, fine. <laughs> okay, is this BRIC G20? Let's look at G20 again. Now we have uh, described what G, uh, BRIC is about. What's G20? What are the countries involved and what is the intention of this G20? You see, we, you see, in a global economic uh, alliance, uh, we, we, we assess these countries more or less according to their economic uh, strengths, mm. uh, their development stance. So we move from G7, group of seven industrialized countries, to G8. Then we now move to G20. Now, G20 is in, is in recognition that the fact that, look, we no longer have uh, seven or eight countries who are major superpowers, as it were, that to ignore emerging economies, like I just mentioned these other countries, emerging economies, to, Im to ignore them will be, will be something you know, akin to shooting yourself in the leg. So, we, so they had to you know, expand the scope so we can have G20. And from G20, we still have a G77 countries. Mm. That is where you now include you know, the whole, a whole gamut of uh, developing countries. But G20 is uh, growing in significance because uh, we can see what BRICS and other strategic alliances are, the influence they are beginning to exert. Mm -hmm. So G20 is another way of saying, okay, what BRICS can do, we can do it. We can, we can also accommodate those interests. Uh, which one is older? G20 should be older than BRICS now. G20 is older, but it, it wasn't as prominent as it is today. It was more or less whenever the G7 has a meeting, the whole world takes notice. But with the emergence of these BRICS, you see that more attention has been placed on the, you know, to, to, towards the activities of the G20 to actually you know, serve as a counterbalance to what the BRICS are doing. Mm. So the, the thing is, when all these alliances are going on, what, what are you doing? 
what are we, where, where are we in the, in, the, in the scheme of things? Okay, the G20 is being powered by the West, mm. okay. Uh, will you say now that this, uh, um, what do you call it, this uh, BRICS uh, uh, is uh, dominant in the Asian, you know, uh, continent? Mm. Because we have China, we have India, we have, uh, okay, Brazil is in Europe, and uh, a whole lot of them. Brazil, Brazil is a South American country. South America, okay. Uh, South Africa, Africa. Then Russia is kind of in between, in the East, and the, Asia. In the East and the West. <laughs> you, Russia still identifies with Europe, Europe at some point, and mm. still identifies with Asia, so they are kind of in between. Okay. So, but, um, you see, these countries, uh, not minding where they are from, uh, the aim is to leverage their key strengths. And if you look at just by combining, okay, minus South Africa, just by combining these countries together, you have more than half of the world population. Yes, because yeah. India and China alone, then you add that of uh, Brazil. You've had, you've had you've, you, these, these countries alone make up more than half of the world population. Mm. So they can decide to do you know, business with themselves and they'll be fine. Uh, with that kind of population comes with, you know, a very large market. So if they trade with themselves, they will be fine. They can ignore you. They can ignore you and nothing will happen. Look at the way China is sustaining Russia today because everybody has been placing Russia on sanctions because of uh, this uh, in, its invasion in Ukraine. But Russia is not feeling it with the sanctions. Why? Because China is a, is a steady market and you cannot place China on sanctions because they are trading with uh, Russia. Russia. No. Why? So, why? Because uh, China has arrived. China is the second largest economy in the world that is set to overtake the U.S. economy by, over to, uh, by, uh, by 2025. With, uh, That's uh, in two years' time. Yeah, a, a GDP, projected GDP of over $25 trillion. Mm. Uh, dollars. So you cannot, you, 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 you cannot ignore China. China has the largest uh, number of uh, food soldiers for any nation's army in the world. And other things. So you 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 want to look for China's trouble. You cannot stand the consequences. So everybody will just be playing safe. Minus that, you see you see the kind of benefits this kind of alliances give you. Yes, they can they can threaten Russia, but to an extent, they can threaten countries like North Korea. China is but in BRICS. Russia extent. is not in BRICS. It's Russia in BRICS. Yes, Russia is in BRICS. Okay, Brazil, let's look at the Russia, place. India, oh, okay. China, South Fine. Africa. Okay, let's look at the place of Africa in all this in G20, in, in BRICS. What is the place of Africa, apart from South Africa that have gone ahead to, you know, you know <laughs> what is the place of African continent in these two groups? Well, when we discuss Africa, I tell, I tell people that, yes, on the, on the outside, we have one Africa. But on the inside, we have North Africa and we have Sub-Saharan Africa. When we talk of North Africa, we are talking of our, our Arab brothers, mm -hmm. uh, Algeria, Morocco, Libya, uh, Tunisia, and so on. Those ones, the, those those, ones seem to have aligned uh, with the UAE. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so those ones prefer to be addressed as MENA countries, that is Middle East and North African countries. So they, 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 they find more uh, comfort aligning themselves with those than with you know, the rest of Black Africa. So, you, so most times, and again, it's not just that they define comfort there. It is in sub-Saharan Africa that you have the real problem. Most of these North African countries, minus this uh, political instability and uh, uh, Islam uh, religious tension they have there, uh, apart from that, they are fine. They are better off than what, is, than what is going on in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. So when we, say, when, when we say Africa, yes, on the outside, Africa maybe, but on the inside, most of these uh, North African countries are, are relatively fine. But the challenge is, what is Sub-Saharan Africa's position in all these things? Because it, if you look around, you only find South Africa there. And South Africa is, South Africa is there because, to an extent, if you look in, in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, you see that South, uh, South Africa is still a country that can serve as a model as far as development is. Uh, what we call in